Hello everyone and welcome to SV Californica. So I am here in Avalon on Catalina Island and this is a really unique trip. So we are gonna try and save the rarest tree in all of North America. So this is the Catalina Island Mountain Mahogany uh, or Circocarpus Traskii and it only has estimated about eight individuals left in existence and it's here on the backside of Catalina in a real rough habitat uh, in a place called Wild Boar Gully. People don't know my background is in uh, plant propagation of native plants so I work for Tree of Life Nursery, native plant nursery in San Juan Capistrano and what we're trying to do is grow this plant and Typically it's done by seeds, but that's almost impossible right now. So we're trying to do cuttings. Now, traditionally cuttings are impossible with Circocarpus. They just do not take, they don't root. And so I studied at the University of Hawaii uh, where we used to, where I learned a method called plant tissue culture or micropropagation. And what that is, is basically growing plants in test tubes. And what I do is I'm able to put all the nutrients and anything that the plant needs to grow in a gel that the plants can grow on while also eliminating all environmental stressors uh, by growing these in these uh, jars uh, safe in a laboratory setting, providing light and everything like that. So it's a really good method for rare species and plants that are traditionally really difficult to grow difficult to take cuttings of, difficult to grow by seed, and so we can over overcome those challenges using this method. So today we're going to go out and assess the material, go see the last remaining eight individuals in the wild, and then uh, come back and make a plan to start putting these plants into in vitro or in glass culture uh, of micropropagation so we can have the entire population represented uh, and grow them out and start to try to uh, save these plants and make sure that they do not go extinct. So it's gonna be a real fun trip today. I'm gonna meet with the, some of the Conservancy members here. We'll go up to Ackerman Nursery and then go check out the wild population at Wild Boar Gully. All right, so here we are at Ackerman at a uh, aptly named place, Middle Ranch, here in the middle of the island. Uh, it's a little ranch here, but um, I'm here with the plant conservation team and we're gonna go check out the Circocarpus Trasky. But uh, I wanted to show you guys here what's available for people to see. Come volunteer and get your hands dirty growing plants, uh, native plants uh, here on the island. So um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and uh, just, what you do here at uh, Ackerman and for the Conservancy. Uh, my name is Roya. I'm the conservation horticulturalist. So I grow a lot of the plants and start a lot of the seeds, do a lot of the outplantings, and do a lot of watering for the first year <laughs> so, until the plants get established. I'm Seth Kalpinen. I'm the botanist and native plant manager. So I look at the plants and think about the plants and find the plants. <laughs> And uh, I'm Danny Flory, I'm the conservation director. I give these two a hard time <laughs> and uh, find uh, resources for them to do their work. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, they grow a lot of native plants here for restoration, for conservation, uh, it's with anything happening out on the island. But these plants are also available for purchase, right? So if people wanted plants from that and all that money goes back into the conservancy, back into the island to do more of this type of work, so. Uh, we're real excited. We're gonna. It's gonna be a hot day, so we're gonna go out and check out the Circocarpus in the wild before it gets too crazy. But I um, wanted to put some faces to the people doing this type of work. So, all right. Thanks, Karen. Right Thank you. There's so many. One block. Slower. Is he angry? Yeah, he's, he's displeased. No, he's just I scratching would, himself. I would hang out up. for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can just stand there for a long time. <laughs> he's pretty. He's in good shape. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
do with a dust bag. Like, yeah. Just scratching. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> the matches. How crazy is the hike down there? All right, so we are now down into the enclosures and we were here with one of the mature specimens of uh, the Cercocarpus trasky or the Catalina Island Mountain Mahogany. So what's going on here? I mean, we're, we're, there's, we, were, we have enclosures here. There's another enclosure around. So why are we preserving this species? So this species uh, was, was not known to science until uh, just about 100 years ago um, or a bit more than that. And... Uh, um, at that time, even, there were just a few dozen of them, and now we're down to maybe six to eight. Um, so this is one of our more threatened um, species. It's a federally listed endangered species and a state um, listed endangered species. Uh, so we're, um, we're really struggling to preserve the genetics of the species um, and also to get it outplanted onto the landscape so that it can um, fill whatever ecological role it historically would have filled. Okay, so we, we know that there's only so many here. And so uh, what are the pressures that this is facing? Why, what is threatening this species? How did we get to such a small population size? It's a little hard to say because by the time the species was discovered, there were fewer than 100 of them. Um, but it's, it's very likely that it has to do with the history of human impacts on Catalina. Um, there's uh, several centuries now of um, pretty profound grazing impacts, and uh, it's likely that that had to do um, with the decline of this species down to this single gully on the southwest side of the island, um, which is steep-sided and hard to access. Um, but until recently there were goats and pigs on the island, and formerly there were sheep and cattle, so um, those are just some really profound impacts that, uh, that some plants just can't deal with. And especially uh, that's true of island plants um, that have a long history of evolution in the absence of, of those kinds of animals. So right. it's, it's likely that, that that has a lot to do with the rarity of the species. And then a previous, and another reason why we're not seeing a lot of the other species here, but you're, you're, you're mentioning that there's hybridization is also mm -hmm. a problem. And so can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, at, at this point, probably the principal threat to the, the species is hybridization because uh, since there are so few of this plant, uh, probably six to eight, um, most of the pollen that, <clears throat> that comes to these plants is from a different species, Cercocarpus betuloides subspecies blanchii. Um, so the, the result is that each time uh, a seed is formed, it's half Traskii and half something else. And if you do that enough times, you end up with something that's really not trasky uh, not trasky -E anymore. Uh, that, that process is something that we're trying to address with um, some interesting techniques like tissue culture, um, which is why we're here today with Kevin. <laughs> yeah, so, so that hybridization, it's, it's a problem. You have only maybe six even, or, or who knows, we're doing that genetic work mm -hmm. to find out how many, but uh, so there's only so many. You have another widely distributed species. So I think the term that we would use is hybrid swamping. So these are getting swamped yeah. out or the, the pollen is swamping and, and creating new hybrids. And so, so it's likely that that imbalance of genetics, this could slowly start to go extinct with no recruitment or new, no new seedlings of this particular species. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're seeing fruit forming right here on this plant now that will some maybe produce seed and uh, I think mm -hmm. we mentioned that there's not really producing a lot of seed mm -hmm. viable seed yeah so um but so these could likely be hybrids it's ultimately. yeah it's very likely that these fruits though they're on what we think is a pure trasky plant the fruits uh are are uh, have been formed by hybridization um so were we to plant those seeds we would get a hybrid yeah and so your other traditional method of doing propagation would be to take a cutting right mm -hmm. So um, just as a native plant propagator myself, we know for any circocarpus, whether, or the mountain mahoganies, it's just nearly impossible to get them to root. If they do root, they're not really successful as more as they mature. Um, and which Roya knows that behind her trying to, there you go, <laughs> as well as her, the propagator here on the island. And so what do you do? And so that's where 
Seth and I have been talking and, and Denny as well as, as part of doing plant tissue culture. It's an advanced method, but growing plants in test tubes. And so what we're gonna do is remove all the environmental pressures and just have just that cutting have a better chance of rooting and succeeding and, and in a contained environment. And so we overcome, we give all the nutrients and everything we need to that, to that cutting to, and are able to include hormones and things within plant hormones, natural recurring plant hormones into the, the, the media. And we can then get successful, healthy cuttings that then we can send back or, or, or what. But we're gonna able to really preserve these species um, and every individual that we can find to be pure. So yeah, um, yeah, that's I mean, the hope to uh, to yeah. get those uh, historic Catalina genetics elsewhere on the landscape. Yeah. Let's go check out some more of the individuals. All right. <laughs> All right, so we found another individual here, right on this this stream bed here. Um, but what's really impressive is it's right along this erosion so you see this whole landslide has come in and this poor individual is just hanging on by a thread in fact it's probably helped prevent a lot more from coming down into the into the creek bed here but um yeah Seth, so so this is another concern for the conservancy is the erosion yeah so um so presumably they're at least somewhat adapted to this sort of thing because um this is the the habitat that they naturally occur in and you can see down here that it's it's rooted actually in soil that that mostly consists of large rocks from rock falls um, but also you can clearly see that that this landslide came down right on the tree half of its root ball is exposed um, so this could could easily be just a catastrophic event for this individual and because there's only a few of them for the whole species um, so this is certainly something we need to think about but we we've, we've actually got two seedlings right behind me growing in the creek bed in the rocks and when the first rain comes, there's going to be a significant disturbance event for them. Um, but like I said, this, this is the habitat that this plant naturally occurs in, and maybe it can deal with that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, but but we, we do want to get it planted at other sites so that single events like this don't threaten the species. Yeah, and even though seedlings could be hybrids, and this yeah. is just a, one of those remaining individuals that yes it's adapted but still it can have these real catastrophic events totally you see a huge die off behind us of, of these guys of some of the branches really so that's not going to be putting on seeds uh and you know who knows this whole as, as long as that root ball stays intact we're good but you know if, if things go south in, in the direction you could you could easily lose this individual yeah it's it's hanging half into the, the creek bed here and this yeah. This was, um, it looks like it's principal stem and now that's, that's completely dead. Um, so deer, erosion, people sometimes, yeah. but hopefully we can be part of the solution too hopefully. To, to reverse that. For once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Radar, full radar station. All right, so now we're back up at the top of the fence on the outside of the enclosure where we came in. And so, Denny, uh, I wanted you to just talk a little bit about, these are some hardcore <laughs> built fence. And so it looks like you've done a lot of effort to make this a secure enclosure. And so why did you go so big in this? And why is this fence so important? Well, this, this fence is, is what is standing between what we saw today and oblivion. Um, islands are laboratories of, of new adaptations of life to changing circumstances and what we just saw today, the Cercocarpus Traskia is one of those. And it, um, unfortunately, the, the current policy of deer management is leading us towards having to do these kinds of things. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's anybody's intention to keep life behind bars like, like this. So I think it's time that we um, take a look and re-examine that policy. Yeah, well, I mean, they're up they're 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 serving their purpose and keeping the the circocarpus here yeah. excluding from those those ungulates you see that there's like some good size you know netting within that or how it's woven with those metal bars that foxes can get through yep. and all the other animals it's just those those non-native species that we don't want that's that these plants haven't adapted to you were able to exclude those so these are safe and able to survive into the future we, we're also building some of the fences around places where we have fire 
just okay. uh, uh, last year we had a fire in the middle of the island and we uh, put up some uh, deer fences and we're already finding very interesting results in terms of plants that are adapted to uh, reproduce after uh, fire. Uh, so it's a difference between you know what we find inside and outside. I think this is just a, a, some, a somewhat a temporary measure. I hope that in, within our lifetimes we have a situation where we don't have to have fences like this uh, on the landscape. Right, right. So yeah, we have that, that living laboratory around those yeah. fire ecology yeah. to understand, to remove the non-native type of animals that we can study just how fire is a part of the role here mm -hmm. on Catalina and how that comes back. But we have this here uh, protecting this in the temporary until we can get those that, that this circocarp is back into um, a healthier population size that we don't, we don't have to have it behind bars like this. Well, that's one of the ideas of the work of the Conservancy. We take our mission to be island-wide. So whereas, whereas this is necessary for the time being, our ambition is to restore the island and to make it viable so they can take off additional environmental challenges that are coming with climate change in the future. Right. And in order to do that, we have to bring this up to the scale of the entire island. This is just a, a temporary, uh, necessary uh, step in it. But I'm, I'm, we are all looking for being able to do bigger things on the landscape. That's good, that's good. So yeah, Thank there's you. a positive, positive message sure. here and a lot of optimism. <laughs> and, yeah. and I look, we look yeah. forward to it. Thanks. So, Thanks. A lot of work. I'm glad sure. you're doing it. All right. Thank All right. you.